Hi, I'm Amy, and today it's all about Family Search. It's your guide to Family Search. Do you really know Family Search? Do you know all of the different features that it has? Do you not know anything about Family Search? Well, today I'm going to go over everything that they offer on the site. I'm not going to dive into anything really deeply, but I'm going to give you a great overview so that you know what's on Family Search and you know some things that maybe you might be missing. So, what is Family Search? Family Search is a genealogy website that is based in Utah. A lot of times you'll hear people talk about the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, and Family Search is part of that. But they developed a website and they've been around forever, and there's a lot there. Now, Family Search is owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. And some people are like, what's the deal? What do they care about genealogy? Well, I want to take a, just a minute and explain that. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believes in the Bible and believes in the scripture in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. But basically what it means is that the earth will be cursed unless we are bound together as families and that the family unit is really important. And so beginning in the, I think in the early 50s, the church began funding microfilming of county records and city records and state records and then expanded into other countries as well and they probably have the most genealogy records of any of the other big websites as a matter of fact a lot of the sites refer to family search as records so like when ancestry talks about all of the records they have on their website or find my past or i think even my heritage some of those records are actually microfilm held in family search that have been shared by permission. So they have a lot of information there. And because of the belief in trying to unite families together, including your ancestors that have passed away, they put this stuff out there for free. So Family Search is completely free. Now you can get some of the information on Family Search without having an account, but you're much better off if you have an account because there'll be a lot of things that you can do that you can't do without an account. Now again, an account is free. And some people worry that if they put their information in there that the um, missionaries might come knocking on their door from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that's not gonna happen. If it does, it's a coincidence. That's not how the missionary program works. So you don't need to worry about that. So why would you maybe want to have a Family Search account? Let me go over some of the features on Family Search and then you can decide whether it's something that you're interested in. All right, so here's the Family Search's webpage. And this is not logged in. And if you want to get started, you can click on this or you can create an account up here like there. I already have an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. All right, so what are the features on Family Search? Well, the thing that most people kind of hear about is the family tree. And let me explain the family tree to you. Let me show you, this is my teaching tree. I actually have another Family Search account that has additional information in it. But let me just kind of show you what I've got here. So here is just a very rough family tree. You, in, you start building a family tree by putting in your information. Now, just like any of the other websites, living people's information is not viewable to somebody else in the family search tree. So anybody that's living, they're not gonna be able to be seen. The information's not gonna be seen. So that information is just in your family tree. But in family search, once you put in somebody that's deceased, then you will link in to the family search tree that is a global collaborative tree. Now I've done some other videos on issues with the tree because some people get really frustrated because somebody's made changes in the tree. It's a collaborative tree, it's not your tree. Now it's your tree as far as the living people that are in your tree, but once you've hooked into the global tree, then it's not your tree anymore and you're sharing it with everybody else, you're sharing knowledge. So this is my mom and I don't have any other information in here for privacy re reasons because she's still living, but let me add her mom. Her mom is not yet in the tree. So let me show you how that works. So I've already put her dad in the tree, but now I'm gonna add her mom. And her mom is, and I don't even need to have a ton of information because her mom's passed and I know she's in the system. So I'm gonna put in my grandmother's name, my maternal grandmother's name in Kansas. 
The one thing that I do need to note here, whether she's deceased or living. So now that she's deceased, Family Search is going to say, hey, your deceased ancestor may already be in the tree. Enter at least one date. We're going to try to find a match. So I do the next and I find a match and she's my only possible match. Now you may have multiple choices here and you may need to examine them, but I'm going to add this match. And if you'll notice, there was nothing in the tree. Um, now, if I click on this arrow, all of a sudden, all of these other individuals that are a link to her in the community family search tree appear in my tree. Now, the reason I've taken the time to show you this is I want to give you a word of caution. This can be wrong. So don't just adopt everything and say, oh, I've gone way back, because in some instances, these trees go way far back. Oh, I've gone way back, and it's true. It might be true, but it might not. And if you want to get into serious genealogy, you need to prove it, okay? You need to go through it, and you need to make sure that the information is correct. But it's great to look at, and you might find information in here that you're not finding in other places. And let me show you a little bit about the information that's out there. So I'm going to take a look at Stella Mae Harris. Now I'm just going to show you a couple of things briefly because I just recently did another video on this and I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that at the end of this video so that you can take a look at that video as well. And that will give you a lot more detail about this page and how it works. But I just want to point out a couple of things that may be helpful to you in your research. First off, you're going to see the information that we have here. We have her birth, death, and burial information. That may be information that you don't have. And as you scroll down, they're also going to provide you some research help here on the right. This will note um, records that they have in their database that may be of help to you, that may be records that are not currently attached to Stella, as well as note things that you might want to be looking for, which Ancestry doesn't do this. So this might be a place where you can put your information and it will help flag some things that maybe you haven't been looking for, like a possible missing child, as well as it will give you warnings like, you know, her mother is probably not right because she was too young to have a child at the time of this person's birth, you know, things like that. So there can be some really great helps in there. And then that provides some other information here. And then here you have the different family members and you can visit those. Um, this also shows you the latest changes that have happened in the tree um, so that you can kind of see what people have been doing to that person. It will add a place for some notes that somebody might have added. And then right here you have a direct link to search for records on these different websites. Now, if you don't have memberships to these different, they'll still show you some potential records, but in order to really look at them and dive in, you need to have a membership. But it still might be worth your time, so it automatically populates this individual into those different search engines, so then you can search for records via the information that's been provided into um, Family Search. Let me just show you really quick. So if I click on Ancestry, it's gonna open up in a new tab, and it's going to show me some of the results that show on family on Ancestry for Stella. Now I'm already logged in and if you're not logged in, you may see some different things. If you're not logged in when you were to click this, you wouldn't be able to see the image. But you can also search on Family Search. And like I said before, Family Search is free. So if I click on that on Family Search, then it's going to give me also records and I can look at any of these with some caveats. Um, sometimes you might see a camera on some of these records with a little key above it. And that means that the, the because of the agreement with whomever they microfilm the record, they can't show this to the public at large. You have to go into one of the family search libraries, either in Salt Lake City, Utah, or they have them all over the country. And now they've been affiliating with public libraries as well. So your public library may have an affiliate relationship with family search and those locked records you might be able to see there. If you don't see a camera, you're just going to see a record here, but it might link you to something else. So anyway, you might want to take a look at that. Again, I, I don't have the time to go into all of that. But all of a sudden, you have a lot of great records, and they're free to you, including the 1950 census. If this video is helping you out, please give it a like so that other people know it's worth your time. All right, so that's the person page on Family Search. Now, the sources page is really helpful on that person. This tells you all of the sources that have already been linked. 
There may be a discussion here. You can collaborate with other people that have been contributing to this person. If you click on that person, that's me, and it will pop up a way that you can contact that person and email them and, and reach out to them and say, hey, I wanna collaborate with you, so that's kinda of cool. But the other thing that I really wanna note here are the memories pages. But here we have images, and these are pictures I took of her grave marker, as well as some photographs that I've uploaded for her. Um, but a lot of times you'll find documents in here, um, histories and journals and other really interesting things on somebody. And so you always want to look at the memory pages on the family search tree. All right, enough about the tree. So that's the first thing that you can do on family search. But what a lot of people don't know about are all the other things that you can do. Okay. So I want to go over those tabs really quickly. I'm going to skip search because I'm going to come back to it, but I want to go to memories. Memories um, is really your memories. It's the memories that you have uploaded, but you can create a slideshow with them. You can create an album and share them. You can organize memories by topic tags. So as you're uploading information into your tree, you're going to find a lot. You can discover memories that others have maybe put up about your family member here. So these are like images, these are the stories, things like that. So that's pretty nifty. Family Search Memories has a separate app so that you can upload even video or audio directly into Family Search. So again, that would be a whole nother video, but that's something that you can do. The Get Involved. Get Involved is a great way for you to find opportunities to contribute. Now again, this is a free site and you can contribute to the work. The main way people do that is by indexing. Now indexing is you're looking at a picture of a record and then you're pulling out the information so that then in these search engines it can be found. And that's really, really valuable. They give you training on how to correctly index. And then you can index through right here. You can index right here by clicking index and you can start indexing right here, right now. And you can see I haven't done any for a while. So, but that's a great way to do something, okay? And then the last thing that I wanna show you are some really fun activities. Once you have your family information into the family search tree, they take that information and you can do some really fun things. You can see where in the world that you're from, and this is a map. You can learn more about you. You can learn about your family, the ancestry of your name, or the, or the information about where your name, your surname comes from. Famous relatives that you might have. Um, all this stuff used to be in separate apps, or you had to go to separate sites, and now you can do it right here. You can compare a face. You can compare your face to a relative's face. That's pretty cool. You can record your story. You can do family. If you have children, this is wonderful. You can do in-home family activities with your family. And there's a lot of really great ideas here. So there's a lot of fun activities as well that are really great if you're trying to share your love of genealogy with your family members. Don't miss that. All right, so now I'm gonna to get to the last section. The search information is super important. Every professional genealogist knows this, and, or if they don't, man, they're nuts. Um, they're not probably a very good professional genealogist. So if you're talking to a professional genealogist and they don't know this, find a new professional genealogist. Anyway, this is where I, we're here all the time. I'm on family search probably when I'm working for clients on a daily basis. And I wanna illustrate a couple of things here. Now, again, I have additional videos about this and I'm gonna add that to the end of the video as well as the playlist. I have a family search playlist. So you can look at all of the different videos that you think may be of interest to you as you're trying to learn out, learn more about family search. I just wanna take a moment and give a shout out to all my channel supporters. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It helps me keep going and I really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the first one is records, and this is just a general search, kind of like when you're doing the person. You can put your information in here you can, and you can do a search. But you can also search by collection and you can search by place, and that's very valuable. Um, you can also search images. You can explore historical images. And as you can see here, they have 5 billion images and it's growing. Look at how quickly it's growing as we speak. 
So you can't search for names here and they can, they'll talk to you about why you can't search for names, but you can search for image groups by place. And this can be really helpful. This is not usually a place where you're going to find a picture of an individual. This is more of a place where you're going to find maybe Civil War photographs or, or photographs of a particular place. But sometimes you might find an individual. So anyway, you can become more familiar about finding historical images. Um, you can search the family tree. You can look in the family tree for a particular person. You can also search for genealogies. Now, I, I want to kind of give you a word of caution here. When family search first started, people were submitting their genealogies to family search and they have a ton of them. Um, they used to be just rows and rows that you, when you would go to the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. And I think they've archived those because they are now digitized. Most of them are. Um, but they're information that's been gathered by people. So it might be wrong. But some of this information was submitted in the 50s. So these people may have more information about your family tree than you do. And they now are deceased. And that information is maybe not available to you other than from here. So that may be some place that you want to take a look at. Um, they also have oral, oral genealogies, which they've been working really hard in countries like Africa. I mean, currently they're doing this. Um, in countries like Africa to gather people's oral genealogies because that's how they've passed down that information. They've been passing it down orally. So if this is something that's interesting to you, you want to check this page out. Um, they also have, I'm going to skip catalog because that's going to take a little bit more time. I'm going to go over to the digital library. If you're looking for a book, either on a family surname or on a particular location, you want to find biographies that were printed in a county they used to make. That was really popular in the 1900s. So you can um, search like Orange County, California biographies, and you might get the information that you need. There's lots of great information here, and that's what, and I'm I'm on her a lot. You can do an advanced search by clicking this and add more information into your search. The wiki page is another option. I have an entire video on the wiki page. The wiki page is basically Wikipedia for genealogists, and it's not family search specific. They'll put information that will send you to Ancestry, to a local historical society. They'll put all kinds of information in here. It's invaluable. As a professional genealogist, I'm in here all the time. And so check out my video on that about how to better use the wiki pages. You can search by location, but you can also use the wiki pages like if you want to know more about researching Native Americans, you can put that in where you can put a topic in there like that. Searching military records for World War I veterans, you can put that kind of information in there. So anyway, wiki pages are, in, are seriously invaluable. So you want to become more familiar with that. And then finally, you want to go, you want to know the catalog. This is the thing when I talk to people that have been hobby genealogists for a long period of time, in all honesty, I'm shocked at how many of them don't know about the family search catalog. If you have any kind of brick wall and you haven't been in the catalog, that may be why. You really need to learn how to use the family search catalog. It will just make all the difference in the world for you. Now the Family Search Catalog works best by place, but it does work by subject as well. And I have videos on this as well, but just let me show you really quickly. So I'm gonna use the California example. So one of the tricks to making this work a little bit easier is to go big to small. So you don't need to put in United States, but you wanna start by typing your state. So I'm gonna type California. And then I'm going to add orange. Okay. And then you'll see here, this is Orange County, California. This is the city of orange in Orange County, California. Now, most records are held on a county level, but that's not always true. Sometimes they're held on a state level and sometimes they're held on a city level. So you want to look at all of those different options. All right. But I'm just going to show you the county. So I click on that and then I click search. And then I see all of these different records that they have in the county. And some of these records are not going to come up on a regular search. Land and property records are a perfect example. If you want to look at deeds, if you want to do some deed research, and I have a whole other video on deed research as well, those aren't going to come up in your search engines. They've not been indexed yet. And I don't know when they're going to be indexed. So you need to attack it from this area. 
Um, if you are looking at probate records, now some of those probate records are now being indexed, but a lot of them aren't. And Ancestry has a number of probate records. Some of them they have obtained themselves, but a lot of them come from FamilySearch. And I find it easier to do a more thorough search via Family Search than I do on Ancestry because of the way the books are organized. And I have a video on probate records and you can check that out and I explain that in a little bit more detail. So these are some of the other features about Family Search that a lot of people don't know about. If this video has been of help to you, please give it a like and let other people know that it's worth watching. If you haven't subscribed, I'm trying to double my subscribers this year. So please do so and you can be notified of other videos that I have that are coming up. Family Search is pretty cool. And I really wanted to give you the opportunity to see some of the things about Family Search that maybe you weren't aware of. And if you weren't aware of Family Search, to clue you into a great place to go to help you with your genealogy research. I want people to be able to do their genealogy. I want people to find their family and discover their ancestors. And it can be expensive as people are joining and getting memberships to various sites. They're not cheap. I love the fact that Family Search is free. And so I really want people to know about it and to utilize it because there's so many things there that can help you in your pursuit of your ancestors. So I hope this has given you something new that maybe you didn't know before. I really appreciate you watching. Again, please give this video a like if it's of help to you and subscribe and make it sure that you check out the playlist over here and some of these other videos that may be of help to you. So the videos that I've been mentioning within this video are in that Family Search playlist. So check those out. It includes videos on the, the wiki pages, videos on the family search tree and how to navigate that and deal with some of the problems that you might have in it. The new person page and how they've changed that person page and some of the great features on that, as well as deeds and wills and probate records and stuff like that. So check out those videos and hopefully they'll be of help to you. If you have other questions about family search that haven't been answered in a video, put it in the comments and I'm happy to make new videos and address those questions. And I'll try to answer as many comments as I can, as specifically as I can. If it's a big question, I'm gonna make a video about it. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.